So recently I was watching this video by Breaking Points on millions of men fleeing college, plus the catalog of other videos on YouTube about the subject, and, and it reminds me of this story about a kid who drops out of college in 2013 because he wants to be a nonfiction essay writer or something. And after he drops out, he moves to a big city because he thinks relocating will change his life. But it doesn't change his life in the ways he anticipates. <laughs> like when he finally gets a job, all his coworkers are highly educated with Ivy League degrees. And this makes him feel insecure. So he starts to say he attended his college and leaves out the part where he dropped out. Thankfully, not that many people press him on it because this kid pays obsessive attention to his grammar so people will take him seriously. And on good days, he would say he's moderately successful. But on bad days, and there are many bad days, he ruminates that staying and finishing college might have given him more of a safety net to fall back on in case his dreams don't work out because he's not rich. Now, I don't know the conclusion to his story yet. We don't talk that often openly, to be honest, but maybe by examining his motivations at the beginning, we can understand why men are leaving college, but women aren't. Because there's this argument by people paid to think publicly that this gender imbalance trend in college is gonna massively disrupt the dating market. It will mean a dramatic misalignment of women and men and will have profound social effects on our dating culture and future marriage rates. Like people think there's gonna be a pandemic of picky pan-Hellenic women that won't have anyone to marry because men will soon live miserable, low-earning, uneducated lives, which like, I guess. But this vision of reality strikes me as unlikely and I think fundamentally misunderstands what women and anybody looks for when dating. Like there's a statistic that if you have a master's degree in your dating app profile, you're twice as likely to match with a woman than just a bachelor's degree, which we can talk about a little bit later because honestly, I find the entire conversation of why men are losing out to women in college to be pretty vapid and mainly discussed by men who already have college degrees, which skews the perspective. Because after talking to that kid, I can confidently say men are choosing not to go to college, not because of women or Title IX or lack of encouragement or any sort of banal red pill. Blah, 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 blah. Instead, I think the increasing divergence between men and women choosing to go to college can be explained in two parts. One is psychological and individual. The other is sociological and more community. The first part is unsophisticated. Psychologically, men on average tend to have higher openness and risk tolerance. And I don't think I'm saying anything that mainline psychologists would dispute. For example, the early adoption of a thing is usually led by men, like the internet, cryptocurrencies, weird religions like Scientology, large language models, AI. You can always find women who are pioneers, but they tend to prove the rule. When a new divergent path opens to explore the world with unknown risks, men on average can be found adopting it quicker than women. But before we chest them, this has its drawbacks. Like, yes, men adopted cryptocurrency, but we also adopted QAnon and Alex Jones. As new viable paths to excel under capitalism without a college degree open up like thin irrigation streams leading to faraway crops, men on average are more likely to assume the risk and take a chance on that new bounty. Like, I have a sister who is way smarter than me and she pursued school aggressively in a way I just did not. She literally programmed an augmented reality app at age 21. Scan the object to localize. Once it's localized, we have an onboarding bubble that says tap to start that initializes the experience. Yo, 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 what's good? And then they begin populating in. You just watch them slowly. There's hundreds of them, so it takes a while. And I would wager there are an increasing number of men dropping out of college while their smarter sisters are not. Not because they're less capable than men, but because these non-degree holding jobs are inherently more risky and men are just willing to dice it more. So that explains the psychology individual part, but the other part is sociological, which you might find kind of harsh or unkind or maybe even offensive. So if you do, I'm warning you now. And I'd like to start with a question, which is what is the function of college? It may sound sophist and circle jerk, but I'm being serious. Because I would submit to you, clever viewer, the true function of college is to act as a social safety net for the average. Like at its core, college is a social program designed to guarantee a certain standard of living to a certain percentage of the population. Regardless of whatever other excuses we come up for attending college, that's its true function. The social contract is, if you go to college and finish, you'll provide a reasonable middle-class life. The university system and why governments care so much about subsidizing it is because it provides a reasonable state of living for a large amount of people underneath the middle of the bell curve. For example, Medicaid is a social safety net program to help the poor, right? And Medicare is for the old, Army is for the immigrants, let's be honest. And college, 
College is for the average person, the average looks, the average intelligence, the average motivation. I'm including myself in this average, by the way. Truly exceptional people, Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg, Carly Claus, Kim Kardashian, Taylor Swift, Robert Heinlein, Michael Crichton, each have unique talents that put them above average, and they would have succeeded whether college existed or not. For them, it's like being given a one-bedroom apartment when you've already inherited a mansion. I truly feel you could remove the entire institution of college and it would have little impact on the trajectory of remarkable people's lives. But for the rest of us, college is still a useful social safety net to protect us from poverty, at least until it's not. Like, as the social safety net of college decreases, Ergo, more debt is required and less earning power is offered in return. It's natural we see increasing numbers of people choose to opt out of that social safety net and its economic contract in favor of other options. But I would suggest the social safety net of a college hasn't entirely eroded yet. Like I learned late in life, a common path to success is to exploit your proximity to power and prestige. It's essentially the entire plot of succession. Marry the billionaire's daughter, and eventually you get to be CEO. Buckle up, fucklehead. But college can be a great way to break out of the random spawn point life assigned you and insert yourself in an environment where you're closer to power, fame, prestige. From a talented professor in advanced robotics to sharing a dorm floor with the son of a Gulf State prince, college is still useful for exploiting power and prestige that can be leveraged later in life. This applies to women too. Like part of the reason why so many girls are currently going to college is because historically, College was a position of power. It just only allowed men to participate for hundreds of years. But women have known for a long time that college and a subsequent degree places a person closer to a position of power. They've just had to fight until now to reach parity with men. So it makes sense women would continue to pursue higher education vigorously, even if guys have lost some interest. Hi. But ultimately, I think men leaving college is merely a leading indicator of a larger trend, that more teenagers will continue to choose alternatives to college as its social safety net shrinks. For the past 60 years, college was a wine boulevard that many people could drive down to to arrive at success. But I predict in the future, it will narrow to a two-lane road for specific careers. But that gets back to all the fear-mongering, because even if women continue to outpace men in college and graduation, I just don't think it'll disrupt the dating market as people suggest. Like that kid who dropped out of school in 2013 and moved to a big city, women with Ivy League degrees had no hesitation pursuing him romantically. Like, no Ivy League school may have admitted him, but he certainly slept on all of their campuses. That's because women, and really I don't think anyone, cares whether their partner has a degree at the end of the day. When it comes to love and sex for humans, they want somebody special, they want something novel, they want to hear a story about your past and project a story about your future. Like that statistic about having a master's degree in your dating app profile makes you twice as more likely to match with a woman than just a bachelor's degree is true, but not because of the education it signifies. It's because in 2023, a bachelor's degree is average, whereas a master's degree is special. And everyone wants something more than average if they can get it, including average people like me. In the marketplace of love, it's not about degrees. It's about diversifying yourself in the crowd. So men are dropping out of college because technology has opened alternative paths to succeed without a college degree where historically they didn't exist. And if those alternative paths prove sustainable, we'll see women quickly join men in abandoning college by the millions. But in the interregnum, while this all gets sorted out, I suggest young adults look where they can best exploit their proximity to power whether it's choosing a college, copying an internship, or changing geographies. Those are my thoughts on the millions of men flee college. I'm not surprised or concerned. I don't think you should really be either. And I'm trying.